Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Friday, September 20th, 2013. And today we are discussing the U.S. economy. What is going on with the American economy today? Well, the Federal Open Market Committee just had its meeting this past week, a very important meeting, one that the bond traders, the stock traders, the currency traders have been waiting for since June. With bated breath, they wait to hear every word that comes from the mouth of Ben Bernanke, the Fed chairman. This time, they were not disappointed. They did not get what they predicted. Mr. Bernanke, they predicted, would taper his $85 billion a month bond purchases. $85 billion a month the Federal Reserve spends pouring new money into the American economy every month, $85 billion more of borrowed money to buy U.S. government bonds, but there was no tapering. There was no 5 to $15 billion per month taken off that. No, Mr. Bernanke said, we have to keep the presses running. The presses will continue to roll. The $85 billion per month remains intact. His statement was, quote, they wanted to see, they being the Fed, wanted to see more evidence that the economy can sustain improvement before scaling back the bond purchases. Well, I would like to see some evidence that the economy can sustain improvement too, but I am not seeing that. They also noted, though, the Federal Reserve noted that the tapering could begin at any moment, at any month, at any time, or not at all. They don't know when the tapering might begin, but they remain ready to start it if employment and unemployment reaches their target levels, or inflation reaches their target levels. This is the way these people think. The numbers are all false. The formulas are all corrupt. But still, they watch the numbers. My own theory is that the Fed is hooked on this bond purchasing. The Fed knows very clearly. Mr. Bernanke knows this. Lawrence Summers knows this. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why he took his name out of consideration for Fed chairman. Does Janet Yellen, the next person in line, does she know it? Well, who knows? We'll find out. They know that their money printing is the only thing keeping this house of cards called the U.S. economy afloat, and therefore they are hooked and cannot stop it. That is my theory anyway. What does all this mean for you? If you are not a stock or bond trader or currency trader and you don't have billions of dollars riding on every word Mr. Bernanke said, what does it mean for you? Well, Perhaps nothing, nothing at all, unless you buy food or fuel, unless you have some type of hopes and dreams for your children's future, then perhaps it does mean something very important to you once again. In this world, in this Federal Reserve created economy, the middle class is killed, it's beaten down. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. At the same time, the Federal Open Market Committee was meeting and announcing the results of its bond buying. The U.S. Census Bureau produced its annual report on incomes and poverty in the United States, and they announced that 15% of the U.S. population now lives in poverty. This is according to the U.S. Census Bureau. That's not that shocking. We probably thought it was higher than that. Well, the long-term view of U.S. household incomes over the past 25 years illustrates what I'm talking about, folks. Money earned in inflation-adjusted dollars by the family at the exact middle income level in the United States has actually declined over the last 25 years. The middle class is being killed. In 1989, the median household income was $51,168, and in 2012 it was $51,017, or said differently, 24 years ago, a middle-class family was making more than a middle-class family was making one year ago. More and more people are being driven down, beaten down, driven into poverty. The Agriculture Department just announced that 23,116,928 U.S. households were enrolled in the SNAP, or food stamp, program during June of this year. That is more than 20% of U.S. households, which is actually higher than the level of poverty that the Census Bureau says we have. 20%, one in every five people, households rather, one in every five households in the United States is enrolled in the food stamp program. Perhaps we should consider, at least just consider, taking a different direction, but no. 
We can't do that, the Federal Reserve says. We have to run faster in the same direction we've been running now for generations. For example, the uh, debt ceiling is coming up to be raised, as almost everyone knows, the debt ceiling. The debt now over $17 trillion, and it's time for Congress to vote to raise the debt ceiling again. But President Obama calmed everyone's fears in a speech the other day by announcing that raising the debt ceiling does not increase the debt. That's what he actually said, folks. Raising the debt ceiling does not increase the debt. He pointed out that we've raised it over 100 times in the past, but failing to point out that that has resulted in $17 trillion plus of debt. Well, President Obama thinks we're pretty gullible, I guess, or pretty stupid, and perhaps he's right. Time will tell. I'll give him one thing, though, and in relation to Congress. Congress votes to spend the money. Spend more, spend more, they say. Keep the people back home happy by voting for their favorite spending programs. But then they whine about actually borrowing the money that it takes to pay for all their spending. Well, in conclusion, folks, the Fed decision to keep printing means one thing. One commentator I read said it means that inevitably the collapse will just be from a higher diving board. Well, that's pretty graphic and that's pretty clear. The Census Bureau's report means we have destroyed and are destroying the economic opportunity, the future ability to keep up by creating more and more money and more and more debt. We're destroying the futures of a whole generation of Americans, a lost generation falling from a high diving board, folks. That's what it means to me this Friday, September 20th, 2013. Until next time, folks. This is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.